um, Amy Steele, who is known as Dr. Amy Steele. She has been a candidate for the State House here. And uh, that's not always the easiest position to win as a Democrat here in North Carolina. There are reasons for that. I think she'll probably go into some of that. She comes to us as an educator, you know, K through 12 educational experience. Uh, like Al, I understand she speaks Spanish. Uh, she's got a master's in, in school administration and PhD in curriculum and instruction. And she's got a goal. It has something to do with turning out more people as voters, registration, particularly lifting up black and brown voters and getting all Democrats to the polls. Um, you know, without blathering on here any further, a Amy, take it away. Tell us what you're up to. What is this new project? And can we uh, turn North Carolina into a new Georgia? Uh, yes. And yes, I will tell you all about it. Um, <laughs> thank you all so much for your time and your attention um, for, you know, coming today. Um, I hope you enjoy your virtual vituals. Um, I have some <laughs> coffee here with honey, so I am ready to jump on in. I am a teacher by trade, so everything I do sounds like you're in a classroom, and that's okay, because I feel like that's the best way to educate people. Um, I also love school. I love school supplies in particular, but I do love all of the things that come along with going to school. Uh, so thank you, Jeffrey, and thank you, Ken, and everyone. Uh, thank you to two of my special friends, uh, well, three, uh, Valeria, Jean, and the amazing and inconquerable Al Higgins. Thank you, ladies, for your amazing dedication to the Rowan County Dems, but also to democracy in general and for being my friends and amazing women. Uh, so I come to you today on this beautiful Saturday morning when hopefully all of you are getting ready to go out and enjoy the fall weather, get some apple cider, take in the North Carolina scenery, see the leaves changing, and really just uh, do something for yourself today because this work is difficult. It is hard work. And you must take a moment to not only breathe it in, but to care for yourself. Because if you're not well, then you can't continue fighting the good fight and democracy will suffer because you're sick. So get well, take care of your mind, take care of your body, take care of your spirit, and then you can continue the fight. Um, so I bring you greetings from the good old Concord, North Carolina, right next door. And as Jeffrey said, um, I did run for office in 2018 and 2020. And I don't, you know, I, I don't make any qualms about it. I lost, <laughs> I lost both elections. Um, the first race I lost because, uh, well, gerrymandering. We're, we're gonna lay gerrymandering over everything. So that's purposely drawing lines to favor one person over another. So gerrymandering for sure, but something magical happened. I was expected to lose by 10,000 votes, but I only lost by 1,978. Now I still lost. Let's not get it uh, twisted. I still lost, but I lost well. <laughs> if you can do that, you can lose well. And I say that because that means the tide is turning. Things are shifting. So then in 2020, I also lost, but this time we had a whole pandemic layered with gerrymandering, layered with not having a structured field program within our state that we could tap into as candidates to be able to continue the fight and continue the door knocking and continue the, the aggressive field that Democrats are known for um, in the midst of this pandemic in a safe, socially distant way, like Georgia did. That's the difference between us and what happened in Georgia and what happened here. Uh, uh, of course, there are tons of other differences. I get compared to uh, Stacey Abrams, and I'm honored to be compared to Stacey Abrams, but uh, I get compared to her and other people all the time. And again, it's an honor, but at the same time, I do recognize that North Carolina is different from Georgia. And so I'm not going to paint you a, a lily rose picture and say that we don't have work to do. We have a lot of work to do. Um, so let's jump on in, shall we? Uh, as a good teacher would, I am prepared with a presentation. And I hope you'll listen fast and I will go fast and then allow you the opportunity to ask me some questions. So let's jump in. Um, because I lost in 2020 and really saw a need to make sure we had a better system in place going forward, um, I decided to start the New North Carolina Project and the New North Carolina Project Foundation 
and we just launched a super PAC this past week. Why am I doing all this? Well, I'll be honest. I don't really, uh, I didn't really plan to do any of this. I plan to lose gracefully. I didn't plan to lose, but when I lost, I plan to be graceful and take my ball and go home <laughs> and stay home. Uh, for those of you who know me, I'm very busy. I have five kids. I have a husband of 22 years. Um, I run three businesses. I'm an entrepreneur by heart. And uh, I left the school system in 18 to run for office. So I, I volunteered to run for office because if you don't know, you don't get paid for running for office. I volunteered for the last three years and I needed a break. I was really ready to just be done with running for office and I was ready to take a break. And in doing that, what I learned was in my debriefing meetings with different groups across the entire state and the nation, because other groups had uh, sponsored me or endorsed me, I learned that everyone thought the same thing. They thought we lost big in North Carolina because we didn't knock doors, because we didn't do our aggressive field that we're known for, and because we didn't have anything in place to take over when candidates were told to not knock doors. And I said to myself, self, this is a good problem to solve. Let me help solve it, meet with a few people, and charge someone else with doing this task. But if you know how, if you believe in God, like I do, if you know how God works, God says, okay, if you see the problem, you need to be a part of the solution to help fix it. I knew it was a problem and I knew I wanted to be a part of the solution. So I met with about 75 people before making the decision to fully engage and dive into this work. And those 75 people were individuals, <laughs> not as a group. I would have loved to, to have been a group, but it was just individuals who all felt the same way. We must engage communities of color, particularly in North Carolina, on a year-round basis and stand up a field operation that works regardless of what's happening with political elections, et cetera. And so that's how the New North Carolina Project was formed. So I invite you today to engage. So what does engage mean? Well, engage means to occupy or attract or involve someone else's interest or their attention. So you are engaged. You're here today. You're actively moving in the space of political involvement, but everyone doesn't do that like you. You are the 20%. Everyone does not behave like you. So your job every day is to wake up and go find people and teach them how to be like you, meaning teach them how to engage on their level wherever they are. That's our job and that's our mission today. So the mission and the vision of North Carolina is essentially to make politics represent the needs of North Carolinians who live here, to expand the engaged electorate, and to build a better foundation for people to feel like they can become a voter for life. Now we get a lot of uh, flack about our hashtag voters for life. Voters for life means voters forever. Okay, so get it, get it correct. That is how, that's, that's what we're aiming for. We're toying with changing that hashtag, but that's what it means. We exist to create a more equitable future for all of North Carolina. Essentially, we wanna stand up an aggressive field organization, which we've already started standing this organization up that can operate in the field year round and not operate like parachute politics where you parachute in three months before every election, talk to as many people as you can, and then you leave the community the day after the election, not to be seen again until three months before the next election. We don't wanna operate like that. Our people in North Carolina deserve better. So who are we? Well, I'm Amy Steele on the left, Dr. Amy Steele. I'm the founder of both organizations and the Super PAC, as well as the executive director of Just One. I know my limitations. <laughs> I'm the ED of the New North Carolina Project, found the, uh, New North Carolina Project, which is a C4 organization. This young lady on the right, far right, that's Yakima Reinhardt. She is the new executive director of the C3, which is our nonpartisan um, partner, sister partner organization. And then Bree Hendrick, this nice lady in the middle, is the deputy executive director for both organizations. So she splits her time and serves as an operations um, director for us for both orgs. So why are we doing this? Well, I've already laid the foundation to, for you earlier, but essentially we wanna engage communities of color. Um, we want to build year-round community organizing that doesn't, again, leave when the community, uh, when the election's over, but it also doesn't center on politics. Community organizing is exactly that. It's organizing communities, not organizing political structures. We also want to build a voter base for years to come. 
to know that there are so many people who did not take part in the 2020 election when many of us lost across the state just pains me. It pains every candidate and it pains the 17 black women who also ran for office who did not win their elections, of which Al Higgins was one of them when she ran for state house. To create a more just body of leadership in North Carolina that represents the people who call it home. That's why we are doing this work. We also wanna demonstrably build a sense of trust in various communities across the state. If you are not uh, in tune with what's going on in communities of color, there is a natural just overlay of distrust of political systems, of social systems, of structures that are designed to oppress people of color, all kinds of people of color, not just black, all kinds of people of color. And our goal is to build trust within those communities with people who are coming from those communities to help build that trust. Additionally, we want to help the more than 1 million, and that number is not an exaggeration, the more than 1 million eligible and or registered voters of color who did not vote in 2020. We have so much work to do. When I saw those numbers and I recognized that there were people of color, Asian American Pacific Islander, Native American and Indigenous, Black and Latinx, who were eligible in 2020 but did not vote, it shocked me. I lost my election, my last one, by 2,800 votes. There were over 6,000 voters in my district who leaned progressive and who were also of color. Not every last one of the 6,000 were of color, but many of them were who did not vote in 2020. That could have made the difference between me winning or not winning. But I believe God always has a plan and here I am today. So what do we plan to do? Well, we plan to have a six prong field approach and we're actually not planning this, we are doing this. It's no longer a plan, it's actually happening right now. Um, so we do door to door canvassing, cold doors, doors that we've knocked on before, maybe someone's knocked on before. So we're doing the deep canvassing around issues that are important to certain communities and then we're also doing normal standard political canvassing. So again, we have a C3 and a C4 and both organizations canvas. We do strategic phone banking. This is where we do cold calls into communities of color based on data we have. And then we also do warm calls based on contacts that have previously been made by voters who are already registered, who just need a, a jolt of continuing to get engaged. We do text banking. So this is where we text a group of you know, people who we, again, same thing, want to get involved and connect, and then also text people who we have never met before um, or no one's necessarily touched their door or they may not even be registered to vote. And so we'll engage in the next steps of getting them more engaged on the text, uh, through text messaging. The rest of our field program involves three other things that we think are essentially important to any field program. Digital Ambassadors Program, which is our relational organizing tool, allows us to create an ecosystem of education around three important elements designed to affect change within communities of color. And that includes health, wealth, and power. So just by signing up, people are able to watch videos, like three minute videos, take a one or two question quiz on an element of health, wealth, or power, and how to build, how to have better health, how to build wealth within your own you know, family structure, or how to have power within your community. By taking that action, we actually incentivize their action of getting themselves educated. And that is done through our block power uh, partnership with a debit card that is branded for those people who do partake in those actions of learning about health, wealth, and power. It's quite a remarkable system. They used it in Georgia right before the election in November, and then also they ramped up tremendously during the runoff, and it found true success with engaging people just to make sure they're staying engaged with health, wealth, and power, and the incentive is only for that, but then it also can be a tool that can be used to help make sure people go vote. We also will do or are doing in-person and virtual events. So this is where we are all over the place, all over North Carolina with festivals, carnivals, cultural events, powwows. We've had three, no, four powwows already. Um, and they are quite an amazing experience. If you've never been to an in-person or a virtual powwow, you really should, should uh, attend one. But we, all, we do community generated events ourselves. And one of our biggest ones is coming up on January 22nd. We'd love to get you involved. And that's gonna take place in Eastern North Carolina. We were received a donation of 4,000 brand new pairs of Chino pants. And so we are working to complete a whole outfit to be able to supply to communities who need the, the, the items. 
and we'll have a DJ, a bouncy house, free, free food for everyone. Um, just an amazing community event in January with backpack giveaways for the children and a coat giveaway as well. We lastly engage in strategic partnerships. So because we have a C3 and a C4 organization, a 501C3 and a 501C4, we are able to partner with other groups who also have a 501C3 or C4, and they are working in this space. Either they're doing food banks, they're doing COVID vaccination clinics or health outreach within communities of color, or they are doing political based organizing, voter registration drives, et cetera. Either way, we are partnering with groups so that we don't unnecessarily step on toes when we go into certain geographic areas. Now, these are some of the issues we'll be talking to our uh, just different people we encounter within the community, as I mentioned before, some of those deep canvassing issues. Education is a huge one for me. Of course, healthcare, the economy, housing, the housing crisis, homelessness are all issues that continue to come up on the doors every time we go. So one of the most important questions, where do we plan to work? Well, um, unlike our congressional districts, which are presently gerrymandered to death, we use eight regions in North Carolina that were created by the Department of Public Instruction many, many, many moons ago. Now, I'm a former teacher and principal, so I recognize this organizational structure very well, and it works for me. So this is how I built the organization. So we utilize this eight regional approach to identify where we're gonna break up our lines, if you will. In addition to that, we overlay that with tons of layers of data. One layer of data that you don't see, well, I'll deal with the one you see. The one you see here is precinct data, just in general voter registration precinct data. So these nate or blue highlights highlight from zero to 30%. So the darker the blue, the more, you know, it, it gets closer to 30% of precincts where Black, Latinx, AAPI, and Indigenous people in 2020 represented 20% or more of the voting age total population. So when you see the 20%, then you can see it go deeper. So the darker the blue, the higher the percentage of just precincts where we have voters of color who represent 20% or more of the total eligible voting age. So what we call these areas are high opportunity areas. These are areas where we will have more, we, we anticipate having more success because we have more people to be able to engage with who did not vote or did not partake in the uh, 2020 election. And this is that map, that same map, but kind of by individual people, not necessarily precinct. So this includes Black, Latinx, AAPI, and Indigenous non-voters in 2020 who were both registered and unregistered as a percentage of the total eligible voting population. Now this data is overlaid with the American Community Survey data, census tract data, et cetera. And we have another layer that you don't see on any maps I'll present today, and that's our census blocks. So the census blocks show us where are all the black and brown people perceived to be in our state. And when we go to certain census tracts, we knock every door in that census tract so that we can get an identification really of who's at the home, are they registered, are they not? So that's where we're working. So what are our goals? Well, we have very aggressive goals. Uh, as a teacher, I've always made aggressive goals and I've always encouraged my students to do so. And Stacey Abrams has a wonderful saying and it says, too big is not a reason to not try. So we're gonna try and we're gonna do our best and we're gonna keep going. So we have a door goal of 250,000 door attempts. That means we go to the door, knock it, and attempt that door. One million call attempts, one million text attempts. The goal is to turn out 100,000 more voters of color over the last election cycle that looks like this one, which is 2018 to 2022, and then to register 100,000 more voters in 2022 primarily, but we have one and a half more months in 2021, so we can include that as well. So what's next? Well, it's game on. Um, if you want to join us, great. If you don't want to join us and you want to talk about us, hush your mouth. <laughs> but it's game on. Aggressive field organizing. That's what we're doing. Um, we've created the partnerships. We're creating more partnerships. I meet with people every day. I have to tell my staff I'm not available on Sundays because I even need a day of rest. Um, but also community engagement. We're in the communities. We're engaging. And we'd love to know if you have a suggestion on who we should engage with or any partners we should work with. 
Um, chances are we've already talked to them, but just in case, we'll take your suggestion anyway. We also just plan to get to work. We need volunteers. We need people who want to serve as paid canvassers and they want to be responsible for a certain census tract or a certain area um, across the state. We also need people to um, do non-conventional things like manage our merchandise shop, which is getting ready to uh, take off and ensure people get the merchandise that they order. So if this is not something you want to do, um, you know, you don't want to get out and knock doors, make phone calls and send texts. We have a gazillion other jobs that you can do as a volunteer. Um, our paid staff, we are reserving just for the field. So if you do not like the rest of our paid staff. So we have about seven, we have, I'm sorry, eight, I don't know, nine or 10 paid staff that we're onboarding presently. We already have six and we're, we're hiring constantly. But if you wanna get plugged into volunteering, I'll drop the link in the chat once I'm done. So how can you get or stay involved? Number one, you can visit our website, newnorthcarolinaproject.org, newnorthcarolinaproject.org. You can also follow us on social media at New NC Project on every social media platform. You can make a donation to our C3 or our C4. We have an Act Blue, so you can go to Act Blue, search us up, New North Carolina Project or New North Carolina Project Foundation. You can also sign up to get involved, as I mentioned, and I'll drop that chat in the chat once I finish presenting. You can spread the word to friendlies. Let people know what we're doing. Now, if they're a hater, don't tell them because I, I will block a hater in a minute. I was going back and forth with a gentleman on Facebook and I finally decided, my staff said, can we please block him? I said, sure, go ahead. <laughs> but I needed to talk with him a few, a few rounds, um, but we don't have time for drama. We don't have time for foolishness. So spread the word to friendlies, but not to haters. Also, feel free at any time to offer suggestions, tips, and strategies. One of the ways we came up with our, you know, the possibility of changing our hashtag was because someone, you know, replied and said, hey, you might want to consider the way this reads. And I said, okay, thank you so much. We'll take it under advisement. We're taking it under advisement, and we've already changed the hashtag to in our public media spaces. Help us also learn more about other groups who are doing good work because we want to create partnerships. We want to work with local food banks. We want to work with cultural groups. We need to know who is, who is the de facto power house in communities that may or may not have an organized C3, C4, PAC, or group, but they are the one person that everyone says everyone needs to know when you come into that community. Let us know who they are. And so this is a question I get. This is my last slide besides the social media. I get this question all the time. Um, so I'm white, I'm black, I'm Latinx, I'm native. What can I do? Well, you can do a lot. <laughs> um, for one, knock in doors where community, in communities where you feel you resonate, okay? So sometimes there are tensions between certain cultural groups. And so, you know, everyone can't go to every community because they may not be received as well. Our goal is to hire from within the communities. But in the event that we need to send volunteers into a community from across county lines, we need to know that we're sending in the volunteer that will be most receptive or received well by the community. So you can still do that no matter what race you are. You can help make calls with voice over IP. The VOIP system we use is amazing. It allows you to call from an anonymous number so you never have to feel like someone else has your phone number. You can also send texts from our secure service. Text messaging can literally be done by pressing a button. Da, 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 da. It's that simple because we design the script, we design the responses. Now, in the event you want to provide a more personal response, we have, you know, information for you. So you can do that as well. You can help deliver, package, or mail merchandise with our postage system and trying to get all that stuff packaged up. It's quite a challenge. So we need help there. You can also help raise funds. You can friend raise, host a fundraiser, fundraise, Al Heggins knows fundraising is my favorite thing to do now. It used to be my least favorite thing, but now it's my favorite thing to do. Um, you can also serve on the development committee, which is a committee that helps us find resources, financial resources within our state and our nation um, of people who want to give to the work. You can also help us plan events or even staff events. Uh, we go around the state, so there's always something happening where we need help. Okay, there's never not something happening right now. Um, and you can also just suggest something. If you say, you know, I don't fit into any of these categories. I have my own way that I want to help. And this is how I want to help. Then make sure we know that and we'll engage appropriately. Here's how you can find us again on social media, new NC project. 
Uh, our TikToks haven't started yet, but they will in January, but we've reserved the name. So follow us on TikTok. We're super excited about doing something on TikTok. We're not quite sure exactly what. So at this time, I will stop the presentation, drop the links and take your questions. I appreciate your time. Wow, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I think we got ourselves a teacher here. <laughs>